Wait for the graphics to come up. I'm getting too uh, excited here. Hmm. Unexciting yeah. pack. Source of plowshares cool. pops out as being strong. Oh, Yagmas will. Sam sees Yagmas will in tendrils of agony, and he probably thinks, "I wonder if I can cook." Is Sam known for being a, a bit of a, a brewer or a, a cook? Should we say in uh, when it comes to cube? Yeah, his his nickname in our cube draft Discord is the head chef because he's always oh. cooking up something. Okay, okay. So, what sort of shenanigans can he cook up with this Yagmas Will? Yagmas Will is a vector to all kinds of broken strategy. If you get a Lion's Eye Diamond, is probably the most common pairing with it. You can suddenly generate a lot of storm count and mana. And it really just scales up. Like, I've seen Sam do some really wild things with Yagmas Will. Probably the most impressive, he had Fast Bond and Zuran Orb and just. Floats all of his mana, sacks all of his lands, plays the Yagmas Will, replays them all, doubles his mana. Sounds like some crazy shenanigans where I'd just be like, F6, am I dead? Cool, yeah. GG's. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, follow up with a mana leak. Uh, not as, as powerful, I'd say, or up to shenanigans, but it's going to be able to protect our shenanigans. Yeah, mana leak is just one of the premier cards for blue. It's it's cheap, it's functional, it's just very good. Has stood the test of time. Yeah, it, it was only just been out, Sean, in uh, you know, in uh, modding with the uh, unbanning reprint of uh, uh, counter spell itself. But just in this, you know, being able to be, you give us access to multiple colored decks because it is only one blue pit plus one colors. And normally, you gain that kind of gain that tempo advantage anyway uh, in, in the earlier turns, especially if we're going to try and do one of these broken combos that you've been uh, speaking about. Yeah, and if you have Yagmas Will in your deck, you're going to want to find all the brainstorms, ponders type cards. And so putting yourself into blue alongside of it is a nice, nice way to go. Okay, pack number three. What's standing out to you? There's a fetch land here. Other than that, there's not really anything too powerful. Collective Brutality is fine, and it works really great in Reanimator. Phyrexian Metamorph also just like a good mid-range card has a lot of application. But I think that the Marsh Flats is the most appealing card to me. Okay, interesting. Pack, you know, bear in mind it's pick three in pack in uh in pack one. It's uh, I don't know if I would have the skill, the knowledge to just you know pack uh, get a fetch this early on. I'd in my head and was like, oh, they'll end up wheeling. I'll, I'll be able to pick a few up later on. But you and Sam both picking it early, and that just shows the difference from you know uh, almost having uh someone not as experienced in cube to someone that is an absolute master. So hopefully Sam, people are picking up on that watching. Sam taking the beseech there is just wild. He is. Firmly planting himself in combo. You only take Beseech if you want to be comboing off, basically. Uh, Citadel, Bloodstained Mire, and Treachery are the three cards that stand out to me. Uh, Treachery is really nice if you get Displacer Kitten. We saw that end up in Jarvis's deck. Um, but that's a great way to generate a ton of mana when you're trying to storm off. And then the Citadel is one of the win cons if you end up with Tinker or... Maybe you get a Dark Ritual, you can cast the Citadel and then chain through your library. Sam is really counting on this Tendrils of Agony coming back to him. It was opened in the same pack as the Yagmas Will. And so you see his picks are just hedging towards that. He's had a plan from the beginning. Does that tend to happen, like, uh, especially in, in this group of players, and even tend to you know, really pull towards the, the, the combo sort of storm element? Or do you think it, this is a, a, a bold strategy cut and, and uh, you know, see if it pays off? Uh, yeah, it's definitely a bit of both. Like, you can get heavily rewarded if you're the only one that decides to do it. And the deck is best when you know that you're drafting it from the beginning. However, if other people decide, oh, I'd see a Tangles of Agony late and there's not really a card that I want and I don't want to lose to Storm, I'm just going to take it. Then suddenly you get hit really hard by people's incidental hate drafts. Or if anybody else has the same idea, you can just end up with a pile of cards that have trouble like turning into you know, a big game. And as we see here, we're not really seeing the card selection, the mana ramp. Those are the things that you need to make Storm work. You need to have fast mana, and you need to have ways that you can find all of the pieces that you need. So like, just drawing a hand of seven cards, it's unlikely you're going to be able to generate a lethal Storm count. 
So you need to make sure that you have brainstorms and wheel of fortunes and stuff like that, demonic tutors to find all of the critical pieces. And it's not even certain that they're all actually in uh, the cube, right? Because you know, there's so many packs that don't actually get selected when, uh, for the draft itself. So you're kind of you know hedging that. Again, okay, what if that doesn't go back? What's the, what's the 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 backup plan? Do any of these cards go well in storm, but could also possibly we could shift and go into another one? Yeah, I mean, there's also redundancy. So the tendrils made it back. That's a good sign. Um, like if you don't get Black Lotus or Lion's Eye Diamond, you can find Cabal Ritual and Dark Ritual, which do a similar role, just less efficient. So I think that as long as you are the only person that's looking for that kind of card, you net, you will find it. Like Dark Ritual gets picked up by other decks, but Cabal Ritual will always float around. So it's really unlikely that Lion's Eye Diamond, Dark Ritual, and Cabal Ritual, like you just don't see one of those. And that's really, when you have that Yawgmoth's Will, you only need to do it where you're like, it's hard to describe how Storm works, but basically what you do is you cast a few spells you cast the agmas will and then you cast all your spells again and follow it with the tendrils so you don't actually need a ton of things going on you just need a few things that allow you to cast those like spells multiple times which is like dark ritual beseech things like that do you, uh any of these double up like obviously could i draft a a black blue mid-range deck here that has a tendrils combo in it or do i have to get, like fully commit my resources to just this combo and and that is it. it like it doesn't have room for anything extra in it well what we've seen here is sam is drafting as though he could be storm however those cards aren't coming and he's picked up a life death he's picked up scrap work mutt and so you can also just be reanimator here you have the life death you've got the beseech you can you can go find whichever piece you need and then with Torsten and Titan of Industry, it's looking more like he might be a reanimator strategy. Well, looking at this here, if I'm going reanimate, uh, that that uh, Archon is looking pretty tasty to me. But then, uh, I agree. What, what else is uh, do, do you like? He's he's been favoring lands pretty high, but I'm not sure pack two pick one highly. His lands are touching on this Minxkin Boo. I wouldn't hate taking Minxkin Boo here, but I think that Archon just being on color, you already have life death, so you can reanimate it. At this point, he just wants to sculpt the deck in a way that is consistent enough so that he can pick up whichever, like if, if he's getting past an Entomb, he can just decide, okay, well, Entomb, Life, Death, that's a turn two Archon. That's probably more consistent. Entomb also plays with the Yagmas Will should things shake out to be Storm, but I would, I would assume that in this position sam is starting to think okay i don't think i'm going to be able to be the storm deck yeah i'm about to say I, there's, a, there's a nice story between me and my friends about how i once picked in two thinking it was reanimate a pack one pick one and uh how i still got there but that's for another time uh as we see in tomb get picked here by sam well Not too many black cards here for him to pick from though only the one i think in tomb is actually the best card that you can get if you're reanimator because there's reanimate animate dead necromancy for premium reanimation threats and then you have life death from the catacombs makeshift mannequin there's just so many there's so much redundancy as far as getting the creature back but there's only one card for one mana at instant speed that puts any creature into your graveyard and that is the best way to facilitate the reanimates is that turn one in tomb turn two exhum or whatever yeah super powerful plays what we've seen then the, we hovering over days was thinking about days a little bit we ended up going with uh shieldred's edict uh how good at edic effects in cube over just straight you know point and uh point removal i think days is much better but because we don't know like sam is definitely black he doesn't know if he's blue so taking the card that just makes the cut and is a solid pickup is is worthwhile dothy voidwalker i really like that here something we saw earlier was a loris and i don't think that we necessarily want to companion Luris in this deck, but if you have Luris and Dothy Voidwalker, you can start to just turn out a lot of value. Every time your opponent casts something, you can just cast it again. So, I actually agree. I think Luris is great. I, I would love to see that uh, in the format without the companion sort of a bit element attached to it, just a legendary 3 2, which lets me cast my uh, X 2s or, or, or less. I think that'd be really cool to have, but anyway. Uh, disagrees so we, we will go with them moving on to our next pick 
What are you liking here? What I can't make out what that black card is. That's Archfiend of the Dross. Not really the best card for this deck. I think Path to Exile is the strongest card. Um, it's also really good against this deck because if you're spending a lot of resources to put a big thing into play and your opponent is just exiling it for one mana. But Ooh, Sam wants to just you. make sure that it gets playable. So Ophiomancer into Toxic Deluge. That makes sense. Toxic Deluge is a great pickup for this deck. It just buys you time. You're not playing early creatures, and if you are, you don't really care if you're killing them as long as you're wiping out your opponent's board presence. Yeah, you're pitting the creatures exactly where you want them in your graveyard so we can get them back out. Um, just It just popped in my head, like what, something that I got taught when I first started doing like uh, drafting was the mnemonic bread. Is a does that run the same in cube uh for you know for, for people who don't understand what what bread is we can talk through that as well while we're waiting for these picks to go so like you know b stands for bombs is is bombs i guess in draft is normally the first thing you pick but in this potentially not right you know like what do we yeah. class as a bomb do we class black lotus as a bomb or do we cast an archon as a bomb and you know, wh where does that line lay so the more i'm speaking about it, maybe it doesn't transfer across this well but maybe you can take the fundamentals of that to these sort of drafts you maybe not bombs because all of the cards are bombs in their own right but bomby things like entomb life death it's just that is so much more powerful than you know like a one drop into two drop so it's it's about making sure that you're doing like one of the fundamental things that is going to win the game it's like is your deck creating a bunch of tempo and making it awkward for your opponent to try to interact with you are you doing this big game plan of like entomb reanimate are you doing like a longer game plan of generate a bunch of critical mass and then churn up a dark depths and a thespian stage it's just about making sure that you have ways to win the game so that's oh, what i would say for the it is important to have bombs but it's not necessarily in the same uh they're not the same power level as as you tend to see them in other just ones, and that's what I was getting at. Is, you know, I'm coming at it from the, the the newer player sort of perspective. Sneak attack, I love that yeah. in the in these sort of reanimated shells because okay, the, I draw the wrong half of my deck and they're all stuck in my hand. Well, I'm going to get them to play anyway. I'm going to start turning them sideways. We do see Exhum was also picked up for Sam. That is a great two drop to follow up the Entomb. And then, sneak uh, attack, particularly good with Torsten you get to find other creatures to sneak into play right away, and then you have to sacrifice it at the end of the turn, which is going to produce seven one ones. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. One of the, new, the newer cards, right? Is that from a commander set, if I'm not mistaken? Or Yeah, I don't know which commander set, but yeah, it's from one of them. Dominaria, Dominaria will be in Solid areas. Thank you very much, producer. All over it. Moving into the last couple of picks here of booster pack number two. So we're shaping up. I guess we're leaning more towards the reanimator now than the actual uh, storm element. We were kind of hedging a lot of our, uh, our eggs and baskets in. Yeah, very unlikely that the storm element is what is going to be driving this deck. However, with Entomb and Yagmas Will and cheap cards like Exhum and Life Death, I could easily see the Yagmas Will still making an appearance in the final list. All right, we're moving into the last pack, pack number three. These are 15 cards. What do you like? Well, Ancestral Recall is hard to pass. So I think we're just going to slam dunk that. Uh, there's definitely some other powerful cards in the pack, but Ancestral Recall is just dwarfing all of those. Tends, Ooh, it tends to be pretty good. Necromancy is a nice slam dunk. Now Never we mind. have... Go on. And I was just saying that everyone's lined up pretty well for Sam here. Then, you know, what I mean, moving into reanimator, uh, getting a, a few re more reanimator spells. Even now we are in pack number three and now hitting a grief as well, which is great in this sort of deck. Um, yeah, especially if you're like grief and then exhume it. You can do a little. It's like that modern deck, the black range, black, red, mid range. <laughs> evoke, evoke. Yeah, yeah the evoke pretty, strategy. Goes, goes pretty Bitter well. Triumph is probably the best enabler for reanimate. Um, being able to discard a card at the same time you're killing a creature and a planeswalker and because it's just better than bone shards because you can pay the three life you don't have to discard a card so yeah very really useful style two drop printed in the new set very good especially in this statue and i say if we don't have anything to discard well we can just pay the life and the fact that it hits planeswalkers as well is huge at instant speed so nice pick up there for sam is there anything With he's missing is there anything he's looking for at this point 
I was actually going to say the two mana removal is is like really critical to these strategies. It doesn't it doesn't necessarily look as good as it is, but when your plan is to just create these mid range board states where you're doing something incredibly powerful like sneak attack for Archon, you just want to make sure that you're not under too much pressure. So if you can spend your early turns removing your opponent's threats, that's just going to buy you a ton of time. Like oftentimes this bitter triumph. It can buy you two or three turns of breathing room to set up your bigger thing. And because you need that space, you can't just curve out and do these things all the time. Oftentimes you're going to have to tap out for sneak attack and then wait a turn. So you really need to make sure that you're not under lethal pressure when that happens. Yeah, you know, and if you can do that, like stop the early board while pitting some of your key cards into your graveyard, it's just win-win. So yeah, really nice pickup there for Sam. Looking forward, you know, I guess like... Are we splashing blue? Are we splashing red? Are we splashing both at this point? Obviously, Ancestral is really yeah. hard to pass up on, right? Like that card, we spoke about how powerful that is. But then also Sneak Attack in this build or oh, this shell of Reanimate can also be super powerful. So it'd be interesting how we uh, bring it all together. But looking at these picks, anything stand out? Um, well, the Undermountain is pretty late and it's a strong card. Maybe we just want to take the Wooded Foothills, though, just for some fixing. It finds the Bayou. And it also fixes red for sneak attack. Um, one other thing to note about the mana is it's you're mostly a black deck in this situation, so it's not very hard to splash the ancestral recall on the sneak attack. You don't need too many sources for either of them, like four, four or five would do, and you could get away with three or four because these cards are just so high impact and powerful. Like you don't actually have to cast them every game for them to be good in your deck, and you really only need, like I was saying earlier, the 13 or 14 black sources will be fine. So that gives you room to be playing these other lands. That's interesting. That's, that's, you know, that's, an, that's a way I don't look at it like that. So I'm, you know, I'm learning as we go along. And I was going to ask you then about the Ledger Shredder. Like I was looking at Ledger Shredder. I was like, okay, well, if I'm playing a bit of blue, potentially I could play Ledger Shredder. Ledger Shredder can help me cycle through my deck pit. Fine, not only the key cards I'm after, but pitting some of my key cards in my graveyard. But then do I want to how rel reluctantly am I always going to have that two drop on turn two where it actually really shines or even the ability yeah. to cast two spells in one turn. So deciding to go with the Collins command here. Uh, I was like way the downside and it's like splashing the ancestral recall. You're not going to be too upset to have an ancestral recall in your hand that you can't cast for a while. But if you have an ancestral recall and a ledger shredder in your hand that you can't cast for a while, suddenly that might just ruin your game. And so you don't want to stretch your mana too far. So when I'm splashing in a situation like this where I don't have a ton of fixing, I only want to splash incredibly high impact cards. That's really cool. And that is re another reason why people watch the, you know, the Alpha Frog Invitational watching these shows on this channel. We get to see and deep dive into the minds of the best players of the game. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, commentating with you and I am literally picking up Tidbits. I'm going to go straight after this, play myself a cube, and I'm going to obviously I'm going to post it when I go free air, and I'm going to put all the credit down to yourself. Uh, nice. That's definitely going to happen. Don't you worry. You you just watch. Free free air coming for Big Will. As uh, Fatal Pushes picks up, mates. I assume the deck is going to look like this. <laughs> but basically, yeah. Just uh, obviously, I'll have more power and uh, uh, and better than Sam because that yeah, you know, I've I've got to give give him that bit of stick when I send him the picture. Turok is a good pickup here. Nice protection from white threat. Let's you spend your mana. Also it's also really good with Luris. You can cast the kicker. Oh, Comes yeah. So there's some of the decks going a bit more mid to late game. If you can get a couple more of those cards out of the hand, as we see another Turok. Late him to uh, Turok. Really we'll rewarded for being the black drafter here. <laughs> yeah, are you getting signs of that? That there's not many other people at this table drafting black? Obviously, that's a pretty easy way to describe it now but up to that point where we kind of get in those signals at least not heavy in black you can have a lot of black like black supports a lot of drafters at the table because oftentimes when you're playing black you're just touching on it for cards like demonic tutor or maybe a grist however when you're deep in black you get access to stuff like dothy voidwalker and him to torak which other players have to kind of avoid because having two black pips in play is not always the easiest thing to do and especially if when you have Dothy Voidwalker and him to Turok, that's what a great pairing. 
Yeah, and remember that the cards are discarded randomly as well. So, you know, you can really disrupt your opponent with these. Not just them being two cards down, getting a nice two for one, but it could be two key cards that they need for their game plan to sort out. And because it's two mana, you know, they sort out their early turn, play their mana dork or, you know, whatever they need to do. But then you really hit those key pieces and completely disrupt the whole turn. It's, uh, it's, it's a really good card to pick. We're picking our last little picks here. Maybe a land, maybe uh, one of the uh, that last white card to our sideboard. And we're going to get to see what Sam's deck look like after this draft. I think we're pretty much in this reanimator strategy. We're going to get the complete deck up on the screen for you all to have a little look at. And we're going to get Gavin to talk through it, give him our rating. What do you, you think? Uh, this deck is great. It's got plenty of cheap plays. And it also is doing some of the fundamental things that you really want to be doing when you've got like archon in your deck you have turn one entomb turn two life death get that archon back you have the ancestral recall which a hidden mode in these reanimator decks oftentimes you can't just fire the recall off on turn one because you have to discard the hand size oops i have to discard my titan of industry for my exhume so that's a really nice uh nice little aspect to the deck and then on top of that, he just has him to Turok. He's got Turok Dread Canter, so it's going to be hard for the opponent to set things up. If your opponent is sandbagging cards in their hand, like LSV likes to do to generate a big turn, he could be severely punished by things like him to Turok or Turok Dread Canter. 